My name's Sydney, I'm from the band Dollskin, and we covered the song Shake It Out by Florence and the Machine for songs that saved my life. I want to say the first song I heard, or the first time I heard Shake It Out by Florence and the Machine was, I was super young, um, and my grandfather actually showed it to me. Um, uh, my grandfather was really into Florence and the Machine and showed me, like, Dog Days Are Over, a bunch of her other songs, and then Shake It Out came on, and that was just such, like, a fun, upbeat song. Um, I was, God, I want to say I was about 12 the first time I listened to Florence and the Machine, um, and it was during a really kind of pivotal spot in my life, so it was, um, it was definitely good to hear Florence the Machine because she has a lot of really good, like, uplifting songs. Definitely to hear a female singing about all that stuff and just to hear a female being that powerful in general was really important at that point in my life because this was, bef like, right before I got into playing music. And so kind of seeing how powerful she was and how much she, like, just kind of was doing what she wanted and being super uplifting was really, like, empowering to kind of follow my own dreams and stuff. So, around 6th or 7th grade, around 12 years old, I was dealing with a lot of hormonal changes uh, that really made my emotional stability the worst it ever was, and probably the worst it ever will be. Uh, I was really all over the place, uh, didn't know what I wanted to do with myself, um, and I was really turning to really unhealthy ways of coping, um, including self-harm and just kind of disconnecting from my parents, from my siblings, which they've always been like my rock. So disconnecting from them was really how you knew it was bad. <laughs> Where else was I going with that? Being 12 was hard. Being 12 years old was really hard. Not even just because I was going through a lot of stuff in school, because school was easy, friends were weird, but uh, I was only recently uh, discovering emotions and boys and so I was dealing with that as well as hormonal changes and so I was like why is my body doing that and then why do I like this boy why is this boy really overbearing why does all he want is in my pants and why am I 12 and this is happening it was a lot of just really overwhelming stuff and my brain was my worst enemy so it just got really toxic really fast so around, around that time, around 12 years old, I actually was really, 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 really into One Direction. But you know, it helped me, and I found a lot of friends through that, that really helped me, like, cope, and granted I did find a lot of really bad ways of coping, but I did find a lot of great friends that helped talk me through things, um, just a lot of great friends in general, because we had something really that we were all really passionate about to relate <laughs> to. After I found bands like Florence and the Machine and Lady Gaga and all these like different powerful people that weren't just One Direction. Because I only listened to One Direction for the longest time and then my mind got opened to different varieties of pop music and different varieties of just different music. Um, and once that pathway was opened, I found music that meant more to me that kind of helped me a lot more mentally other than just girl you're beautiful you know one direction stuff um obviously once i found different music i was like okay you know what fine i'm kind of done with that uh, there was a few one direction songs i just spent a lot of time crying to I, thinking about how all of our fans and all of the people that look up to us are going through the same stuff i went through when i was their age i feel like that makes us very similar and it, i feel like if anything, they should kind of, because it, it, as much as I can see how they look up to us, it's like, I'm human too, you know, like, I went through the same stuff you did, and I made it out the other end, you will make it out the other end, and I kind of try to tell everyone that, that talks to me about what they're going through, is that, like, I went through the same stuff, we all go through, we all go through it, um, and it's possible to make it out the other end, you know, um, and I'm glad that, our music is giving you a way to help you because uh, that's all I want because <laughs> music helped me through it a lot and so if I can return the favor and put that back out into the universe when when we sing about issues we went through when we were 12 or 13 um, it's a bit more I, it's the same way that like if my parents say oh I went through the same stuff when I was your age it's like okay yeah mom okay sure but when my older friends are like my siblings are like, oh yeah, I went through that same thing. I'm like, oh my god, like you feel me, like <laughs> you understand, because it's like, yeah, mom, you went through that in the in the 
forever ago or whatever like so it just feels not relatable but it totally is um believe your parents um now i look back and i'm like oh god my mom was right huh honestly it's like really it it's coming full circle because i know i'm not super far removed from when i was 12 going through everything but i feel like i'm returning the favor to the universe you know <laughs> where i I'm giving back what I got from music, you know, and I just, I just want, I want that to continue and I want people to still find, uh, safety and reason and rhyme in our songs, uh, cause, like I said, coming full circle. I, so, my first concert I ever went to was actually a Hannah Montana concert, um, but that was fun, but my first rock show was Pierce the Veil when I was, I want to say, I want to say I was 12 maybe almost 13 but yeah I was around 12 or 13 and I went to my first Pierce the Veil show and then I saw them another hundred times or something <laughs> but that was that was my first rock show it was at the Marquee out in Phoenix um, it was one of the coolest shows ever because they had all the confetti all the lights I think May Day Parade was there I don't remember <laughs> going to my first rock show Going, especially in that music scene rather than the pop scene because seeing Hannah Montana was cool and all but I didn't really share I didn't feel like I shared anything in common with everyone there because there's so many people and it was so impersonal it wasn't like it wasn't like everyone here is going through something that we're all going through together but when I went to the Pierce Seville show I was everyone was like my age everyone was dressed like me everyone looked like me everyone talked like me and even if they were just a little bit different, they still really liked the music and they still were there to hear these people sing their heart out on stage. And <laughs> when Hold On Till May came on, everyone started crying. And you just felt this overwhelming sense of like, you're sad because you're crying about this song that means so much to you or whatever. Because it's like, normally, especially Hold On Till May, you're like kind of sad when you listen to it. It's one of those songs you cry to. <laughs> but everyone was crying to it and you just kind of felt this overwhelming sense of community and like strength that you feel when everyone's going through the same thing at the same time um because even though everyone's situation could be different everyone's crying about it at the same time <laughs> so it was like it was really really powerful for me to feel that um because it was obviously my first concert my first real concert so it was super powerful <laughs> and it's like I know they're human so it's like I know everyone that I listen to is human and so I kind of have this more respect for them as humans rather than just like I'm a fangirl oh my god so like I can have a conversation with all these people and not make it weird not be like oh my god I love your music uh, <laughs> which I would have when I was 13 <laughs> for sure and, you know, one day I might be able to be like, hey, y'all's music meant, like, a lot to me um, when I was going through it, which I'm sure they've heard a billion times, but um, I know now, like, hearing it from other people, and I, you know, I never get tired of it. I never get tired of hearing how much my music has impacted anyone. So, um, I know I'll, I'll tell them one day, but I haven't yet. <laughs> when I first started dating, and dating, because you can't really date when you're 12, you can't go out. You just text all the time and then see each other at school. Um, first piece of advice, don't kiss on the playground. I got um, in-school suspension for that. <laughs> Another piece of advice would be that your significant other, the person you like, isn't always right just because they're cute. Um, you don't have to send them any pictures or anything like that if you don't want to. You know, have, have, ha like, have some respect and love for yourself before you like really get into boys and everything because they will form they will form you to what they want you to be if you don't know who you are yet um so you can like boys you can want to kiss boys but form yourself before they try to form you um because i uh <laughs> i literally wasn't alone i wasn't on my own till last year i spent about two or three months without a significant other which was a really big time for me like i started dating in fifth grade, <laughs> I had my first boyfriend in fifth grade and wasn't single for more than like a week or two until very recently. And 
I didn't know who I was. I never knew who I was, and I found it out. I figured it out, and now I know who I am more than ever, um, which is really good, because I sit here and talk about being who you are, at, you know, in my music, and on stage, and in interviews, and everything, and I, I still didn't know until, like, a year ago, because <laughs> I was finally on my own, um, which is kind of crazy, but I just wish, I just wish I had been <laughs> alone, because um, it's like, I'm not alone, but, like, on my own. I wish I had been on my own during those super formative times in my life because I just formed myself around whoever I liked, which isn't really the best thing. <laughs> okay. On tour, we kind of have learned that if we walk around like we don't know where we're going, everyone's going to assume we don't belong there. And so we just kind of walk around with a sense of confidence and be like, we know where we're going, we belong back here. And no one really questions it. There was this one show, God, we were in Florida, I think. And <laughs> we go to this venue, we show up, I go in first, he asks me, are you the merch girl? I say, no, I am going to be doing merch, but I'm in the band. Um, and he's like, okay, cool. Um, and then we all walk in one by one, one after another, and every one of us, he asks if we are the merch girl, which baffled me. <laughs> it baffled me because he just... Just because we, like, came across as female and, like, whatever, like, we all were apparently the merch girl. We couldn't be more than that, which was really weird. Um, <clears throat> and obviously at the end of the night, he had been very impressed with our performance and ended up complimenting us, but it's like, he just assumed that we were not gonna do anything like that, and which was really weird. It's no. weird. To any of the young people up at the front of our shows and kind of going ham at our shows, first of all, I want to say thank you. Um, Y'all are why we do this. Um, it's always weird to be on stage and see people just like... So if you even just like do this, I it's great. It's great and we are very thankful. So <laughs> thank you. Um, but whenever you go home, whenever you get back to where you're comfortable, do what you want. If it's music, if it's art, if it's school, if you're like, I really want to go and be like some professor, do that. Go study. Go home and study. Go home and study the music. Go home and study the art. Go home and study the, the science, the math, the language arts, whatever. Um, go home and perfect your craft because you can never stop getting better. When I was younger, you know, only a few years ago, I relied too much on social media and the people I saw on there for my entire personality. Acacia Brindley was who I wanted to be. <laughs> you know, the typical Tumblr girl. That was who I thought, that's who I thought was the only acceptable form of being a female. Because um, she was so pretty and had so much attention. But the, the more I lived and the more I learned who I was, the more I realized I, I should be myself. I should find my own sense of style. And I ended up dressing kind of funny. I look back on the pictures and I'm like, who let you dress yourself? But I felt it. I was like, I loved this outfit, you know? <laughs> there was a time when mismatched patterns and bright neon colors were comfortable to me. And I ended up kind of gaining a lot of sense of myself when I was just like, I don't care what she's wearing. I don't care if she's wearing all Hollister or all Abercrombie and Fitch. I'm gonna go thrift something that's neon blue and then wear this weird neon green shirt with it. It's fine. <laughs> so, granted, you, you don't have to dress like that. You don't have to dress like anything. You don't have to look like anything, act like anything, speak like anything. Be, like, find who you are, and then if you feel like social media is doing anything to influence you, other than just showing you different ways you could be yourself, I would recommend always taking a break. I would recommend going on a hike. I would recommend going for a swim. I'd recommend ta taking your dog for a walk, just taking yourself for a walk, hanging out with your friends, watching a movie, reading a book. I already said reading a book, but reading a book. <laughs> it's okay, seeing your therapist, you know, kind of going over it with anyone, you know, talking about it with a human rather than just posting about it online. Um, a lot of my healing has come from talking about it rather than just posting about it. I had an Instagram where I posted all of my feelings all the time, and I never got better. I don't go on that Instagram anymore, and I feel so much better about life, and about myself, and about my sanity, because I, start I started talking about it. Sitting in my feelings, and 
talking about it and thinking about it, writing about it, reading about it. Um, it's never bad to just sign out. <laughs> the people will get over it. If someone actually cares about what you're doing, they'll ask you. They'll text you. If they don't, that doesn't mean they don't care about you. They just were so used to having it so accessible that they didn't need to go out of their way to ask you. <laughs> but you don't need to do anything for anyone else. You just need to do it for yourself. And if getting off of social media and taking a walk is what you need to do, then do it. If you are going through anything that's bigger than you feel like you can handle on your own, whatever that may be, you can turn to music for some sense of peace, but it's never a bad idea to seek help from a professional, from someone you trust, from an adult you trust. Um, don't rely too much on your friends because they can only do so much for you. They can't be your personal therapist. Please go see a professional. Turn to the music for a sense of peace, but definitely don't ever stop striving for a better sense of sanity. Perfect. Um, there's one more thing.